Hi students, welcome back to the channel Physiology Redefined. <clears throat> so today I will talk about, I will rather explain the structure of skeletal muscle. So in this video, I will basically discuss the gross structure of the skeletal muscle and also the light microscopic structure of the skeletal muscle. So, so to get the clear concept regarding this, these topics, please watch this video till the end. If not yet subscribed, please, please subscribe this channel and share this channel, share this video to your friend circle. So regarding the structure of the skeletal muscle. <clears throat> so whatever skeletal muscle we used to see, for example the biceps muscles, triceps muscles, quadriceps muscles. So these are the examples of the muscles mass. So whatever muscles we used to see in our body, that is basically the muscle mass. So this muscle mass contains a large number of the muscle bundle which is known as muscle fasciculi. That is covered by a connective tissue sheath known as epimysium. So here you see <clears throat> this is the muscle mass, this is the muscle mass. Now, <clears throat> this muscle mass, if it is cross section is done on the muscle mass, then what's happened? We will see that muscle mass will be comprised of a large number of the muscle bundles. So these are all the muscle bundles, these are all the muscle bundles which are known as muscle fasciculi. Muscle fasciculi. So the muscle mass is a collection of the numerous muscle fasciculi which are covered by a connective tissue, tissue sheet that is known as epimysium. Epimysium. Now this muscle fasciculi in turn is comprised of a large number of the muscle fiber. So this is the muscle fiber. This is the muscle fiber. That means the muscle fasciculi in turn is the collection of numerous muscle fiber. And the muscle fasciculi the muscle fasciculi is surrounded by that again a connective tissue sheath which is known as perimysium. Whereas the muscle fiber, each of the muscle fiber is surrounded or covered by a by again a connective tissue sheath that is known as endomysium endomysium. That means as per the gross structure is concerned, gross structure of the muscle is concerned, what's happened? Muscle mass is comprised of, this is the collection of, this is basically the collection of muscle fasciculi, muscle Fasciculi. These in turn are collection of these in turn are collection of muscle fiber. That means a large number of the muscle fiber makes a muscle fasciculi. A large number of the muscle fasciculi makes a muscle mass. Now this <coughs> single muscle fiber, this single muscle fiber, if we see 
under the this single muscle fiber is comprised of this muscle fiber now muscle fiber has got or muscle fiber is comprised of number 1 is the muscle membrane that is known as sarcolemma sarcolemma so under beneath the endomysium beneath the endomysium this is the endomysium this is the endomysium this is the perimysium and this is the this is the epimysium this is the epimysium so beneath the endomysium there is a muscle membrane because muscle fiber is a cell it's, it is basically a cell so it will have a mus cell membrane and that cell membrane or muscle membrane is known as sarcolemma so beneath the endomysium there is a sarcolemma and obviously as a cell it will have a sarcoplasm and this sarcoplasm that is the cytoplasm of the sarcoplasm will contains the cell organelles cell organelles like the mitochondria like the ribosomes like all other cell organelles that is present in a cell along with the cell organelles there will be the sarcotubular system a specialized sarcotubular system a specialized tubular system that is known as sarcotubular system which is responsible for linking of the excitation of the muscle to the contraction of the muscle that is known as the ec coupling or excitation contraction coupling and thirdly this sarcoplasm sarcoplasm contains the myofibrils myofibrils and this myofibrils are the contractile part of the muscles because of these parts the muscle is to contract so these are the gross structures of the gross structures of the skeletal muscle now regarding the light microscopic structure so this is the light microscopic structure of the skeletal muscle so each muscle fiber this is single muscle fiber if a beam of polarized light is passed through the light microscope and the single muscle fiber is seen under this light microscope then what you will see we will see the alternate light band and the dark band light band and the dark band so this light band is known as the isotopic band or i band and the dark band is known as the anisotopic band or a band so there is a consecutive i band i band or isotopic band and the a band or anisotopic band so a band is known as the dark band i band is known as light band so because of the presence of this alternate a band or dark band and the i band or light band the striations are seen in the skeletal muscle so cross striations seen in the skeletal muscle is because of the presence of light alternate light band and the dark band now if we see the details of this dark band and the light band so under the light microscopic structures there is a alternate alternate dark band or a band and light band or isotopic band or i band is present now if we see further details about the a band and the i band what we see at the middle of the i band at the middle of the i band there is a dark line so this is the i band 
light band at the middle of the middle of the eye band there is a dark line which is known as z line so these are the z line so at the middle of the in the eye band what's happening in eye band middle part in the middle of the eye band in the eye band that is the middle of the eye band there is there is z line and the distance between these two consecutive z line is known as sarcomere the distance between two z line two z lines is called sarcomere which is the structural and functional unit of skeletal muscle so this distance between the z line to z line is known as the sarcomere so this is the distance which is known as sarcomere and thereby we can tell the sarcomere is comprised of half of the i band full a band full a band and then half of the next i band so sarcomere is sarcomere is comprised of comprised of half i band plus one a band plus half i band so this is the constituents of the sarcomere half i band then a band and then again half i band which is the structural and the functional unit of the skeletal muscle i hope it is very clear what is sarcomere that is the distance between two z line that which is known as the structural and functional unit of the skeletal muscle now regarding the a band a band can you see a band that is the dark band the middle of the dark band middle of the dark band is basically because of the dark band at the middle of the dark band is known as a zone so this is the area this is the area which is known as a zone so in a band in middle of the middle of a band there is lighter zone comparatively lighter area which is known as a zone and again here you see at the middle of the a zone this green color line middle of the a zone the middle of the a zone this is the comparatively darker line which is known as the aim line so in middle of middle of a zone a zone there is the darker line comparatively darker line which is known as aim line this is known as aim line so z line is the darker line present in between the i band and aim line is the darker line present at the middle of the a band now this i band or the a band what for it is this is because of the presence of alternate highly refractile material and low refractile material so presence of two types of 
filaments presence of two types of filaments with varied refractile property this i band and the a band is there in the skeletal muscle so here you see this sarcomere as i told this is the i band this is the i band i band and this is the this is the a band so this alternate i band and the a band alternate i and a band is due to presence of presence of two types of filaments two types of filaments that is known as biofilaments one two types of biofilaments with varying refractile properties varying refractile properties that means a band has got highly refractile material and i band has got low refractile material and these refractile materials are basically are the myofilaments so two types of the myofilaments are there one is known as one is known as thick myofilaments or thick filaments and this is here you see this is the thick filaments this is the thick filaments this is the thick filaments and the thick filaments are basically because of the presence of myosin this thick filament is because of the presence of it is because of the presence of highly refractory highly refractory material that is myosin that is myosin and the i band within the i band there is a presence of thin filaments i band is because of the thin filaments so the two types of filaments thick filaments and the thin filaments thin filaments is because of the presence of presence of low refractile material low refractile materials or the proteins which are of three types number a first one is known as the actin filaments or actin proteins next one is the tropo myosin and third one is known as the troponin troponin so thick filament is comprised of myosin whereas thin filaments are comprised of actin protein tropomyosin protein and the troponin tropomyosin troponin proteins now this troponin in turn is comprised of three components one is responsible for troponin c another is known as the one component is troponin c that binds the calcium ion another is troponin i which prevents which blocks or covers the actin myosin uh, binding site and third one is the troponin t that helps the binding of the to other troponin molecules with the tropomyosin molecules so these are this troponin has got three components troponin c troponin i troponin t details of these things i will discuss again in other videos now out of this myosin and this proteins the myosin myosin and the actin these are collectively known as these are collectively known as contractile protein contractile 
protein. So this is the myosin filaments and this is are the thin filaments. This is the myosin or thick filaments and this is the thin filaments which is comprised of actin, tropomyosin and the troponin out of which myosin, myosin and the actin these take part in muscle contraction and thereby known as contractile protein whereas the troponin and the tropomyosin they do not take part directly in the muscle contraction process they helps in muscle contraction they regulate the muscle contraction and thereby known as the regulatory protein regulatory protein that means within the sarcomere there are two types of proteins are there in the form of myofilaments in the form of thick and thin filaments out of which two proteins are contractile proteins that is actin and myosin actin actin this is the actin and the myosin these are responsible for contraction and thereby contractile protein and under the thin filaments some other proteins are there known as troponin and the tropomyosin which are known as a regulatory protein because they regulate the muscle contraction so this is all about the gross and light microscopic structures of the skeletal muscle if this one is very clear to you and you like this class of the video please subscribe this channel and share this video to your friends. Thank you.